before any machining is done, we should take note of the spindle speed RPM and the feed rate of the table movement and make sure that they are appropriate for both the cutter and the material that we're working on. The material is mild steel and it's a 48mm width. The cutter is 80mm diameter and the suitable RPM for mild steel with that size of cutter will be approximately 800 RPM. The RPM is shown in these two little windows here. When the machine is set to the high gear range, the speed in the red window is the RPM which has been set. When it's in low gear range, it is shown in the blue window. To change from high range to low range, this lever on the side needs to be moved from high range with the lever pointing forwards to low range with the lever pointing backwards. It should be noted however that when the gear range is changed it alters the direction of rotation of the spindle. can be seen that with the high gear range the spindles are rotating clockwise. In low gear range the spindle rotates in reverse, it rotates anti-clockwise. If the cutter is used with it rotating anti-clockwise it will destroy the cutting edges and also probably damage the workpiece. This lever here can be used to change the direction. Switch off, move into reverse and start again. It can be seen that the cutter is going in the correct direction. So, when in high range, this switch should be set to FWD forward. When in low range, it should be set to REV reverse. For the purposes of this workpiece, we're going to be using the high gear range. Sometimes the selector lever doesn't go in immediately and it's necessary to rotate the spindle until it drops into gear. To change the RPM speed, this small hand wheel should be rotated until the correct speed shows in the window. However, take note of this message. Caution, do not change RPM without motor running. This is because the spindle is driven by a belt which is mounted on tapered pulleys. The mechanism inside of here will be damaged if you attempt to change the RPM without the spindle running. To change RPM rotating the handle until a value of approximately 800 rpm is selected. Moving on to feed rate, the feed control should be selected to move the table. The actual feed rate can be seen in this small window. The dial on the feed control should be rotated until an appropriate feed rate is selected. For this type of cutter and the material and the material width, a feed rate of 2.0 shown in the window is correct. This should be selected prior to starting a cut. Another machine has been fitted with an 80mm diameter face mill. The face mill is designed to cut flat faces, that's its basic purpose. Between the cutting edges, diametrically opposite, there is 80mm in diameter. 
the width of the workpiece is 48 millimeters or will be 48 millimeters finished which means that the face mill is wider than the workpiece when you're cutting flat faces it's always desirable to have a cutter which has a larger diameter than the finished width of the workpiece we need to set positions in both length width and height from now on I'm going to refer to the directions on the milling machine as left to right x-axis forward and back y-axis up and down z-axis before you start milling you should always check to see whether the quill of the machine is tight the quill is used to perform drilling operations by using the handle to raise and lower the drill chuck can be fitted in the spindle and used to drill when you're doing milling operations the quill should if possible be fully retracted into the head and locked using the locking lever this means that the quill is now locked inside the head and it will maintain rigidity during the milling operations we then need to position the cutter approximately central to the workpiece in the y-axis direction and then we need to raise the table and we'll use the knee the power feed care should be taken not to use the power feed to take the table too high otherwise it may crash into the foot so we'll Stop using the power feed approximately 10 millimeters away from the workpiece. You can then raise the table further in the z-axis and visually check the gap between the cutting edges and the top of the workpiece. Adjust to approximately a millimeter. The reason for this is because when the spindle is switched on the cutting edges can't be seen as you can see when the spindle is rotating the cutting edges can't be seen and the cutter is just a blur however the positions the work is approximately one millimeter above. And on the height adjustment, one full revolution equates to two and a half millimeters of height adjustment. Which means that within less than half a turn of the handle, the cutter will contact the workpiece. There's no contact with the workpiece. And now we need to set the digital readout to the height of the workpiece. The workpiece is 50 millimeters high, so if I press the preset and select Z axis, I can then type in the height. The Z axis is now set to the distance between the cutter and the top of the parallel bars at 50 millimeters. If I lower the table, a small amount, a millimeter or so is enough from the point at which the cut and contact at the top of the workpiece, I can then stop the machine just by opening the doors. The air brake comes on and stops the spindle very quickly. I can then centralize the workpiece in the y-axis approximately doesn't have to be exact, so that the centre of the workpiece is in line with the centre of the cutter in the y-axis. I can then move the table to the left until the point where the cutter is approximately 10 millimetres away from the workpiece in the x-axis. In that position, I should zero the digital readout for the y-axis 
on the x-axis. That's done by pressing the yellow arrow next to each of the readouts. The digital readout is now set for the X position, Y position and as previously set also the Z position. Having set the spindle RPM and the feed rate to suitable uh, rates, I'm now going to take the first cut off the first side of the block. The existing dimension of the block on height and width is 50 millimetres. The finished dimension is 48 millimetres. You should never take all of the material off one side, but you should take an equal amount of material off opposite sides. So I'm going to take one millimetre off this side, which will reduce the, thick, the height from 50 to 49. The Z-axis height readout has been set so that it reads the distance between the top of the parallel bars and the cutting edges. So if I set to 49, that means when I take a cut, the height of the workpiece should be 49 millimeters. Start the spindle, power first, and then spindle reset. Operate the feed control lever so that the table moves from left to right. The cutter will now begin to cut. The table can be lowered a small amount. The X axis feed turned off. The Y axis feed can then be engaged to bring the table forward towards the operator. So that the workpiece can be accessed without the cutter being in the way. Stop the spindle by opening the doors. The finished face of the workpiece can be seen. And I'll now remove the workpiece from the vise. As you can see, there's quite a substantial burr on this edge. This means that in between each operation, the face which has been milled should be deburred before moving on to the next part of the operation. The workpiece is now deburred and free from sharp edges and is ready to move on to the next stage.